Hi everyone, welcome back to Alice in the Giant Bookshelf. Today's video is my April wrap up. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name is Alice and I have way too many books. And today I'm going to be talking about all of the books that I read in the month of April. It was quite a few books. I read 16 books in total. Of those 16 books, one was a reread, that was my Agatha Christie. Four were audiobooks, which is good going for audiobooks for me for a month, and two were ebooks. And that added up to a massive 4,597 pages according to Storygraph. Now, Storygraph thinks I read 15 in the month because I am going to be showing you today a book that I actually finished on the first so I guess I actually only read 15 in the month but I finished it so I thought I might as well talk about it. Today I thought I would talk through the books roughly in order in a sort of grouping of books that I thought were good, books that I thought were very good and books that were my favourites of the month. So that's the order we're going to go in but before we do that uh, I just thought I would quickly mention a few books that I've got on the go at the moment that I've started in April but will be finishing in May. I've started reading as a buddy read Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead. This is a buddy read with the lovely Gemma from Gemma Books and we've been buddy reading together a lot lately and I'm really enjoying hearing Gemma's thoughts on um, some of the women's prize books that we've been reading together. We're about 11% into this. It's showing very very good promise. I think it's going to be a brilliant book as everybody has been saying. I'm um, really really enjoying that one so far. Also on audiobook, I am about 25% of the way through The Paper Palace by Miranda Cowley Heller. I'm not really enjoying this one so much. In fact, I've been debating whether to DNF it. Um, but because I don't DNF things very often, I feel bad to DNF this because it's not like it's a bad book. And I actually am intrigued to find out a certain part of the plot. But I'm not that gripped by it so we'll see, we'll see how we go. I've also started a couple of library books in April that I haven't finished yet. So I started The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware last week. I've heard that this is a reworking of um, or inspired by uh, The Turn of the Screw. I've never read a Ruth Ware book but I was inspired to do so by the fact that Emily at Novel Novels was reading one of them. I thought I would try The Turn of the Key because this was the one of Ruth Ware's that I've heard the most about. It's okay so far. I can see that it's going to be quite gripping but the writing style isn't amazing. So I've also been dipping into The Comfort Book by Matt Haig which I've also got out of the library. I realised that I was sort of reading it in one stretch and it's not really a book suited to that type of reading so I want to dip in and out of it a bit more over the course of May. Oh dear. I'm afraid I didn't get very much further in April with Don Quixote by Cervantes. Um, I really am trying to read this book but I just forget about it every time I've got something else on the go, which is all the time. Didn't really make an awful lot of progress with this in April so I will tr keep trying in May and I think if I read a few chapters of this a week <laughs> one day I will finally read this mammoth. And the last one that I've still got on the go is Bring Up the Bodies by Hilary Mantel. This was meant to be read over March and April with the Wolf Hall Along group that is being hosted by Marissa at Blatantly Bookish, Emily at Novel Novels and Tori at Hufflepuff Discovery. I was planning to read this in the final week of the month but I ended up finishing my Anne of Green Gables book instead but this is a really enjoyable book and I'm on to chapter two. So that will be carried on into May. Without any further ado, let's talk about the books that I did read all the way through. And we're starting with the books that I thought were good. The first one is Anne of Windy Willows by Ellen Montgomery. I've been reading one Anne of Green Gables book a month with Emily and Novel Novels Anne Along. And this was definitely the weakest of the Anne books so far. Definitely my least favorite. This book was actually written um, many years after 
the next Anne book, Anne's House of Dreams, that we're reading in May. It really felt like what it was, which was a filler book that the author had gone back and written years later. Part of it is told in letters from Anne to Gilbert, but there are no letters from other characters to Anne, which would have been a nice addition to it, I feel. Hardly any time was spent at Green Gables. I think we had two chapters where Anne was at home at Green Gables. And it just seemed to me like every chapter, Ellen Montgomery was introducing a new character who we were then finished with by the end of the chapter and I would be very very surprised to see many or any of these characters turn back up in another Anne book so I'm hoping that Anne's House of Dreams will be back on track because this one wasn't the best. It did get better towards the end but yeah definitely not my favourite in fact my least favourite of the Anne books so far. Right at the end of the month I fitted in Memory by Margaret Mahi, the longest serving book on my TBR. So this month I have knocked off the book that I have had since the 90s and that means that I no longer have any books on my shelves I don't think that I've had since the 90s. So that is that is a good good thing to knock off. I um, didn't absolutely love this book. It's quite an interesting book about memory. Johnny, the main character, is kind of haunted by um, his sister's death um, five years earlier and he's in a bit of a bad way. He's a 19 year old who's really struggling and he meets um, an old lady who's also really struggling because she has pretty much no memory left. I thought Sophie's sort of illness was really well dealt with because her memory loss was really poignantly well portrayed. She didn't have any family which was very sad. However, this, this is a puffin teenage fiction and I'm not sure that there's an awful lot to appeal to teenagers in this book. I mean it was written in the late 80s so it's obviously not very current. I think the author is from New Zealand and there is a little bit of um, New Zealand sort of uh, politics from the time in this which was interesting but again wasn't necessarily something that I thought would appeal to young readers maybe it would. So I had mixed feelings on this book but it was a really well written little study of sort of grief and an unlikely friendship between a troubled teenager and an elderly woman with her memory failing. Next up, The Disappearance by Annabelle Cantaria. This book was very kindly sent to me by Emily at Novel Novels because it was a thriller she had really enjoyed. I did enjoy elements of this thriller and certainly it was very readable and page turning because I sat and read it in a day so it was nice and easy to read. Personally for me this wasn't like a favourite thriller or anything. There's a historical storyline in this um, set in the 70s mainly and there's a modern day storyline where um, the 70 year old mother has gone missing, hence the title. I didn't think it was particularly well done and I didn't enjoy the historical storyline pretty much at all. Um, I quite enjoyed the present day storyline which is told from the point of view of Audrey's daughter. <laughs> this was still a good book, it was quite a um, enjoyable thriller and I did guess the twist. So yeah I don't think I would look for more books by this author but I still had an enjoyable day with this book nonetheless. Next up I've already talked about this in my previous video about um, April's reads and this was carried over from March as well and it was Those Bones Are Not My Child by Tony K. Bambara. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here but this only is on my list of good books because it was definitely an important book but it wasn't a really enjoyable book to read and it was actually very very difficult to get through so I would leave that in my good category. Also my reread of Sparkling Cyanide which I've already spoken about. This is a pretty standard Agatha Christie. I'd also put it in my good category. Nearly getting towards the very good category now we have The Raven's Knot by Robin Jarvis. I already spoke about this one but I wanted to speak about it here because I also read the third book in the trilogy, The Fatal Strand by Robin Jarvis. I felt this was a very disappointing second book in the series because it sort of came away from, from a lot of the characters and interesting 
time travel and stuff that happened in book one. But I do feel that the trilogy redeemed itself in book three. And there is merit to book two, it just wasn't my favourite. I would put The Raven's Knot in my good category, but I would put The Fatal Strands into very good because this did wrap up the series really well. I thought it wasn't going to. All of these books I would say are a little bit too long. There's a lot of very dense language in this. There were words that I actually had to look up in a dictionary and I didn't think that that was like something I would be finding in a middle grade book. Yeah, it's interesting. I don't know whether these books I would actually consider middle grade, but they're definitely not sort of teen fiction. So I don't know. It was a good trilogy. The first book was still my favourite, but the third book did have a really, really good ending. So I liked that. Enduring Love, I listened to on audiobook for AJ Dunn Reads and Writes, um, Killer Reads Thriller Month Book Club. I did enjoy this. I would put it into my very good category, but I'm only putting it into my very good category because the first two chapters are two of the best first chapters. They're just so brilliantly written and so intriguing. But after the opening, it did go downhill for me. I'm also going to put into the very good category an ebook that I read, which was a short essay by Catherine Rundell called Why You Should Read Children's Books Even Though You Are So Old and Wise. This was a recommendation from Jacket Spread Book Joy and it was really interesting to read about why adults should read children's fiction. Still in the very good category, I read the Sentence by Louise Erdrich. This is on the shortlist for the Women's Prize for Fiction this year. And it's also been one of my most anticipated books this year. I have been wanting to read this ever since I read the synopsis for it on the Booktube Prize list. And it was finally time to read it. I buddy read this with Gemma at Gemma Books. And I did enjoy it more than Gemma did, but it was a very different book, very strange. It wasn't a favourite for me. And I wonder if there was too much hype about this for me. It's possible that I didn't enjoy it as much as I thought because I thought I was going to enjoy it so much. I would say that this book is a really interesting book, but not necessarily a really enjoyable book. So I thought what Erdrich did well was she wrote about the pandemic and about the uh, protests um, following George Floyd's death, which did take place in the area where this is set during 2020. Um, so I thought her portrayal of these political issues and that year in general was really, really good. I also found it really interesting to find out more about Indigenous life in America because I, it's not something I've ever read anything about and I found that bit of it very interesting. The main key story in this is about a character called Tookie who has got out of prison and has a job in a bookshop. My favourite top highlight of this book is the bookshop, which is clearly based on Louise Erdrich's own bookshop, uh, Birchbark Books, I believe it's called. And the bookshop was just wonderful. And all of the bookish elements in this were wonderful. Um, that is what raised this up to four stars for me because I didn't really connect with any of the characters, but I did really connect with the bookshop. It had lots of marks to this book for having a great bookshop in it. I didn't think it had a very satisfactory ending, and most of the time it felt like it was just sort of plodding along. Great bookshop, not great characters that I connected to, unfortunately. Another very good book that I read this month was another audiobook, and this was Clara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro. This has turned out to be my first book that I've read by this author. That's because I still haven't read the one that I got for Christmas, Never Let Me Go, which I'm desperate to read. I listened to Clara and the Sun and it was a really, really good audiobook. I really liked the novelty of listening to a book where the narrator is an artificial friend, an AI, essentially. And I thought she was a really interesting character. I really enjoyed Clara and the Sun. Probably my least favourite thing about it was that, and this is a problem that I'm having with my current audiobook as well, the narrator was really, really good, but when they came to do a British accent for one of the characters, it just wasn't good. It was a terrible British accent. And I'm having the same problem with the narrator of The Paper Palace. It's really, really picky of me, I know, but... <laughs> They just need to sort out their British accents. Clara and the Sun 
definitely firmly in my very good category. It's not one of my favourite books I've read this year, but I do understand why it's been really, really liked and it was certainly something a bit different. Um, I didn't love the ending as much as I loved the rest of the book, but yeah, a really good book. Next up was How to Order the Universe by Maria Jose Ferrada, translated by Elizabeth Breyer. And this was sent to me by the lovely Gemma from Gemma Books. And I really enjoyed this one. So this is told in a series of really short, maybe they'd be called vignettes. <laughs> sort of a coming of age book. At the beginning of the book, M is seven years old. It's told by her and sort of follows through to like her teenage years. And it's largely about her relationship with um, D, her father. So they go out and sell hardware supplies together. And yeah, it, it was a very short book, but I found it very enjoyable. It was just a, a really nice book. Finally, in my very good category, almost making it to favourites but losing points for being so difficult was House of Leaves by Mark Z. Danieliski. This was such an epic read that it feels like months ago already but it was indeed this month and I've already talked about this one in my April mid-month check-in so if you'd like some more detail on this crazy book do check out that video. I'll link it up here somewhere for you. So glad that this book is now off my giant TBR and I owe a lot of thanks to my buddy reader Jack from Spread Book Joy who definitely helped me to get through this book, definitely helped me to understand parts of this book that I was finding tricky and I think she made an excellent buddy reader and we came out the other side and we've both read this book that we've had on our shelf for absolutely ages so thanks Jack for buddy reading this with me and making me finally read it and it is so heavy I'm going to put it down now but yeah it's a great read if you can get past all of the footnotes and just crazy labyrinthine stuff um so yeah House of Leaves was also read this month. Coming into my favourites now, unusually for a favourites of the month, I have no books left to hold up, which means my favourites of the month were all audiobooks or ebooks, and that doesn't often happen. Two out of these three were borrowed on the Libby app. I've been making a lot of use of the Libby app lately, um, borrowing things from my library, and yeah, both the ebooks this month were from Libby, um, because I don't buy ebooks. In fact, I think all of the audiobooks apart from one book that I'm about to mention were on Libby this month so nice free library books. I'm gonna start with an audiobook which was Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. I'm so happy that I read this book. I wasn't really intending to but then um, Gemma from Gemma Books, she's had so many mentions in this video, was hosting a read-along of Pachinko. <laughs> Gemma has been telling me for ages that her favourite types of books are multi-generational family sagas and Pachinko was one of her absolute top favourites. So I thought I would give this a go, especially as there was a really, really good group of people um, gathered together to read this book um, for the Pachinko along. And I'm not at all disappointed that I chose to read it. It was fantastic. A really, really well-written book. So Pachinko is in three parts and it follows a family through the generations. They are a Korean family and they are for the majority of the book living in Japan. This book deals with their lives, um, their upbringings, sort of big life events that happen along the way. There's also a big section set in World War II and we find out what happens to the family during that time. This book deals with at least four generations of this family and all of the people surrounding that family and interlinked with that family by either marriage or other things. So I can't say too much without spoilers but Pachinko is a really wonderful read. I enjoyed part one and part two the most. Part three I felt was the weakest of the three parts for me and personally there were some bits that I didn't enjoy as much in part three. I think this was mainly because there was a character who I didn't particularly care for who 
you obviously were meant to care for and be interested in. Didn't really like her storyline and that caused me to not really enjoy some of the most up-to-date storyline which was set in the 1980s but it did have a really lovely ending and this book does smash your heart into a million pieces several times so I highly highly recommend Pachinko if you like multi-generational family sagas. I think I am probably converted to this type of book. I particularly enjoyed the fact that this one was very chronological and yeah I would definitely read more multi-generational family sagas now that I know they can be this good. So highly enjoyed Pachinko. It was great to read this slowly over the month and dip in and out of the audiobook. It's been really really enjoyable talking to that group. Thank you Gemma for getting that group together because it was brilliant to hear everybody's thoughts and thank you everyone in that group for sort of enriching my experience of Pachinko. The second book in my favourites of the month would be The Bread the Devil Need by Lisa Allen Agostini. This is shortlisted for the Women's Prize for Fiction. I pretty much read all of this in a day. I started it one night and finished it the next day because I just could not put it down. I couldn't stop reading The Bread the Devil Need. Now there's a huge amount of trigger warnings in The Bread the Devil Need, particularly for child abuse. I am not going to spoil or anything but yeah that is a significant part of the book and one that was very very difficult to read. There was one scene in particular that was absolutely horrifying but it's a really well written book. It's written from the point of view of Alethea who is the main character. She's in an abusive relationship, she's manager of a clothing store and this is set in Trinidad and she writes it in Trinidadian Creole, which I found really interesting. I love it when books do something different with the language and this was really well done and also it really added to Alethea's voice. I thought she was a wonderful main character, really really interesting woman. There were some parts of it that were not told in the Creole that were sort of her past history and one of those chapters was the particularly difficult chapter. But it's a wonderful book and I definitely think it deserves to be on the Women's Prize shortlist. So far it's my favourite of the ones I've read on the shortlist, which was that one and the sentence. Currently reading Great Circles so that could easily change. My top, top favourite of this month was on the Women's Prize long list, should have got onto the Women's Prize shortlist, but was robbed and that was Careless by Kirsty Capes. I've given this book its own review video so do go and check that out if you want to know more about this wonderful book. I also listened to this one on audiobook, I also buddy read it with Gemma from Gemma Books and Danny from Danny's Book World and it was a brilliant buddy read. It's a fantastic book following Bess, a 15 year old girl who has just found out in the first chapter that she is pregnant. Bess is in foster care and I really thought that this book was a brilliant portrayal of both the foster system and the late 90s, 1999, and sort of teenage pregnancy and teenage issues generally. And I really enjoyed hearing about all of that through the eyes of Bess. I would definitely say that if you're going to read something off the long list that didn't make it to the short list, do go out and read Careless, it's a really great read and it was my favourite book of the month. Yeah so that concludes my very long wrap up for April. Editing Alice here, I forgot to give you the update on my giant TBR for the month. I acquired four books but I did read three of them this month. So I finished last month on 189 books and we'll add one on and be at 190. I then read four more books from the Giant TBR, Memory, Anne of Windy Willows, The Raven's Knot and House of Leaves. So the TBR now stands at 186 unread books. How did you get on with reading in April? I hope you read some really really good books. So do let me know in the comments down below what was your favourite book you read in April? Did you read any books you would recommend? Did you read anything from the Women's Prize? Because I have really enjoyed 
reading some books from that. If you have enjoyed this video today, please do give it a like. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. And as I said, I would love to hear from you in the comments about your reading in April. That's all from me today. Thank you for watching. And I do hope you'll join me again soon for another video all about books here on Alice in the Giant Bookshelf. Bye for now.